What's up? How's everyone doing? Hey, I'm on time this time. Nice. Let's see who's here. Rich Mitch, <laughs> how are you doing, man? <laughs> Let me just wait till a few more people get here. I think I have a, a few people here. Went to the uh, the easy background with the easy light. Actually, let me let me turn that light. Let me get the blind a little bit. Kajal Perfume, how are you doing? That's a little better. How's everyone doing? I'm Dave, of course. Thank you for coming on uh, my live uh, show here. And today we're gonna be talking about some of the worst fragrances from 2019. Truth be told, I tried a lot of really good ones. I didn't try that many that I disliked. Um, but uh, I did try some that I didn't like. So I want to talk about some of the, some of the worst ones here. All right, let's see. Say hi to some people here. Eon, let's see, Garaway, how are you doing? <laughs> Paul Stanier says hi from uh, hi David from England. Hey, how are you doing, Paul? Mark Cosette says hi Dave from Montreal. Hey Mark, how are you doing? The Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Review says hey Dave, how are you doing? Kyle Armstrong, greetings from uh, Seattle. Rich Back says. Hi, Dave, also from England. Christy from Virginia. Hey, Christy, how are you doing? Always good to see you. Bongani says, hi from South Africa. Wow, I man, I love, I love seeing all these people from different countries. Salim uh, Al Getby says, hi, Dave. Ariel Silva, hi from Bern, Switzerland. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. Salim Al Getby says, from Dubai. Awesome. Man, we got such an international crowd today. Screaming sex doll, <laughs> my favorite person. <laughs> Says, hey bro, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much, Screaming. Really appreciate that. Of course, uh, some of your questions, I'd love to answer them. If you wanna go, if you wanna donate, obviously you can donate. I got a little scratch here, a little tickle. If you wanna donate, I have the live chats up or the, uh, the uh, super chats. So you can donate there, always appreciate that. It'll go straight to the top of the queue. I can answer those right away. You can always at me, at Fragrance Bros. I think I should get my attention somehow. Um, so, my shirt here, I wore this before. This is from Taylor Stitch. Always love Taylor Stitch. Always am appreciative of them. Really love their clothing, and they sent me a couple of shirts, so definitely want to talk about them more. I'm drinking some bubbly, some just flavored water. This is blackberry. It's actually not that good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rich Mitch says, hey, David, from the moon. Wow, the moon. All right, let me answer some questions here. The Blind Sniper says, David, been loving your channel for the longest. Greetings from California. Wanted to ask, do you have any splits available? Uh, so I don't necessarily have splits available. I, I kind of... Uh, stopped doing that after it seemed like the demand for them went down and um, it was a lot harder to fill up. But I do have stuff still available uh, just from previous splits that I just stored. So email me. So just email daver at fragrancebros.com and I can tell you what I have uh, on hand. I don't have a whole lot, but I do have some. Justin, or Justin says, uh, Hey, Cape Town, South Africa, in the house. Awesome. Karim Gad says, do you think we have to buy a muggler before uh, it gets reformulated by L'Oreal? Um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think. I usually don't really care about reformulations to start with. Um, I don't know, if you have one that you just really like, if, if there's one that you really like, I would just say go ahead and buy it. Um, maybe not wait until the reformulation hits. But I don't know, maybe, maybe it won't be that bad. I don't know. 
Anyway, like I was saying, lots of great fragrances came out last year. Some bad ones, too. Uh, but today I want to talk about some of the bad ones. And let me know if you have any bad ones that you think were really bad from last year. Maybe some that you tried uh, last year that weren't maybe, maybe necessarily new. And maybe some that were new. Uh, so, first one is Aventus Cologne, obviously by Creed. Um, this one, so hyped. They got you all worked up over Aventus Cologne, and it, it just kind of smelled like a watered-down Aventus mixed with Chanel Allure Homme Sport. Really disappointed in that. I had high hopes for that, hoping it would be good. It wasn't. So, there's that. But first, let's discuss Aqua Amara. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Aquamara, yeah. So Aquamara, not that great. It's just a slightly more citrusy version of Bulgari Aqua, which is better. Bulgari Aqua is much better. Some people have compared this to Sauvage, which it smells nothing like Sauvage. <laughs> I don't know why people compare it to Sauvage. Maybe it's just because it's fresh and it has citruses in it. It's nothing like Sauvage. <laughs> All right, let's get some questions here before I go to my other choices. Frank Hansen says, Hi, in Norway here, set of the day, Kemen from Dessert. Interesting. I haven't tried anything from their line. I got to try that. Justin says, Scent of the day is MFK Oud Silk Mood. Let's see. The Boro Nerdy Fragrance Reviews. Let me, let me see. I couldn't see it. It cut off your thing here. It says, uh, Dave, one, on one of your lives in the last few months, uh, you have advice on starting a channel. Since then, I actually did, uh, did it. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Definitely go check them out. Let me see. What was your, what was your channel again? It says, what was it Burrow? Did I just delete it on accident? I hope I didn't delete it. I'm sorry. It was Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Reviews. Is that right? Yeah, Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Reviews. There it is. Rich Mitch, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> it's actually called bubbly. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably backwards in the camera there, but it's just water, flavored water, like um, LaCroix or something like that. But anyway, Blackberry. Blackberry isn't that good. I, th I find that like the, the more citrusy ones are a lot better. They taste better. But the uh, other fruity flavor ones don't taste right. All right, let's see. I got a lot of questions here. <laughs> Rich Mitch, gotta admit, postage to the moon isn't cheap. <laughs> That's funny. Screaming Sex Doll says, get this in early, worst frag, obvious, but office for men. Good for bleaching your toilet though. <laughs> yeah, so my office for men is with a friend who may be giving a review of that soon. Um, and so they have it on hand. Here's Date for Men, which I have a, a review of this coming soon. I actually tried both of them in 2019. Office for Men, yeah, definitely not great. And it is on my list as actually one of the worst from last year. Date for Men, I'm not going to give a full review right here. Date for Men also is in my worst of 2019. Did not like this one. And that's all I will say about that until my actual full review. But Office for Men was not good. Even the, the updated version that apparently had macerated longer smelled better, but still, it didn't redeem it from just being a really lackluster citrus scent that, wasn't, that was too loud and it was just obnoxious and not good. G. Pavlato says, uh, D and G. K. Very bad. I still need to try that. The name, excuse me, that bubbly is getting to me. The name alone uh, was like the most lazy name. <laughs> Frank Hansen says, uh, have you tried the uh, Japanese house DC? I have not, but I've heard of them. I think another reviewer was talking about them before. So I really need to check them out. 
Uh, a Japanese house is interesting just because I, from what I understand, the fragrance world isn't as large there than it is in the West. So I'm really interested to see how they do it. <clears throat> Mark Cosette says, I say yes, buy it now. L'Oreal kills fragrances. Talking about the Mugler line. Justin said, uh, bad one I smell was YSL Y. Way too sweet. And you know, that's another one. Another mainstream one that I wanted to try when it came out. Never got to. So they got Y from YSL and they have K <laughs> from Dolce & Gabbana. <laughs> Are there any Z or X? Or Z, as you like to say, in some parts of the world. <laughs> Uh, Zyman Jakubowski, hopefully I said your name right, sorry about that, said, uh, Gucci Guilty Cologne was bad. Oof. Not a good line, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Lots of comments on Aqua Amara. Ugh. Yeah, Aqua Amara, man. What is up with that? It's okay. I wouldn't say it's awful. I tried worse, but it was just on... It was just not... Not great. So definitely one of the one of the worst ones that I tried. Paul Stanger says Spice Bomb Night Vision trash. <laughs> I love how you get these. Anytime there's like a flanker with a strange name, it's almost guaranteed to be bad. <laughs> Spice Bomb good. Spice Bomb Night Vision bad. Uncle Deuce 2 <laughs> said, my only complaint was fan your flames. It smelled incredible, but I found myself allergic to it. Ooh, sorry to hear that. I hate it when that happens. It's never happened to me personally. I've known a couple of people who have kind of gotten allergic to something in a fragrance they really liked and just had like a rash to it, broke out from it. So never good. Jay Fosco, worst of 2019. I have 100 releases in mind. Do tell. Salim Al Ketby says, please, you need to emphasize and explain to your audience that not any fragrance with uh, um, oud on its name means it contains real oud. Oud is just so beautiful, and the majority of what people are smelling is synthetic, bad oud accords. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I don't think that... So, I, I, I don't think that everyone thinks that real oud is in there. Because real oud is really expensive and, um, and rare. So, I don't think that everyone necessarily believes that real oud is in a fragrance. I think... I mean, I would hope that most people understand that a fragrance is kind of an approximation of something... I don't think that everyone would think that if something has gardenia in the name, that it's going to smell exactly like gardenia and have real gardenia or, or whatever. But that's true. Most of the ouds out there are synthetic. Um, and I don't mind that. <laughs> the Fragrance Apprentice. Thank you for discussing Aqua Mara. I can go on and live my life now. <laughs> this has been like the meme. It's been so great. I loved it. Karim Gad said, Labo by uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier is trash. Oof. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, definitely go to subscribe to uh, Nerdy Fragrance Reviews. The Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Reviews. Go check them out. I'm going to go subscribe too if I'm not already. I try to subscribe to everyone. I'm going to go check you out. All right, let's see here. Kajal Perfume says Z from Zegna. <laughs> from Zegna. There you go. There's another one with just a Z. That's funny. All right, let's see what else is on here. Okay. Here's one that really... 
I was really disappointed with this year and had really high hopes for it. Telegrama. It was one of the worst that I smelled, and it's not bad. Some of these on the list aren't necessarily bad per se, but this is just one of them that, man, did not hit the mark at all. Oop, I didn't open this one. So, Telegrama, supposed to be kind of a 60s style fragrance, has notes of, I can look at it on the back here, talc, lavender absolute, black pepper, teak, amiris, uh, vanilla powder, and fresh linens. Um, I found that it kind of just smelled just like a really sweet, musky licorice with some lavender in there. And it did not smell 60s-ish at all. And it honestly did not smell that good to me. I, I thought it was just okay. So that was a big disappointment. Normally I really like the, the imaginary author's line. So big disappointment for me. Man, smell it again here. Yeah, it doesn't smell 60s-ish to me. And I, I didn't get some of the notes either. Like I didn't get much talc, some people do, I didn't. The lavender in there to me was not super strong. A lot of the stuff in here really wasn't that strong. I guess the lavender to me was kind of making that licorice type of chord. And I like licorice. I just, it, I, I found it kind of weak too. And that's one thing that I really didn't like about this. I was expecting something stronger. I don't normally, I'm not normally a stickler for um, super strong fragrances. I think, you know, Having something in different strengths, I think that's appealing to me. Having something that, having some things that are lighter, is something that I that I can use. Um, so I'm not a huge stickler on having something that lasts 12 hours, beast made performance all the time. But this one didn't last long at all, like just a couple of hours max, and then it was gone. And uh, so that hit even my threshold. So I was really disappointed in that. All right, let's get some questions here. Rich Mitch, why has the stream got four dislikes? Probably Serapio Silva and his uh, different, <laughs> his different uh, personalities. Justin said, seen Jeremy's recent videos, dude's getting really weird. I have not. I did see his latest um, thing on Instagram where he jumped the table <laughs> and catapulted like his La Nui. <laughs> that was kind of funny. <laughs> Let's see, Half Sheen Jam says, another wanted, I guess by uh, Azaro, is on the way. With ginger, lemon, and patchouli, how's that going to be? Well, the, the notes sound okay. The notes kind of sound like, um, I don't know how it's going to be. Uh, the notes sound okay, kind of average, kind of a, an average fresh woody scent. It kind of sounds like uh, YVRA 1958, which um, is another one that was on my, my worst list this year. I'm sorry. Not 1958, 1965. This is another one by YVRA. I really like YVRA. They have a few fragrances that they've released and they've done Kickstarters for, for all of them. I think there's three in the line now. There's uh, the original 1958 and there's, an, there's a 1958 Laissance de Présence, which is like a, a a different kind of take. It kind of shuffles around the notes a little bit. It's kind of like a nighttime, night out type of scent. The original 1958 is kind of this, this uh, citrus woody fragrance. It's really nice. A really good go-to scent. I really like that a lot. Uh, Les Ants de Présence is also really good. I like it a lot. It definitely sticks to that line. Uh, it emphasizes more of the woody notes. And I, thought, I think they did a really good job. 1965, I think it's okay. It just happens to be, I don't, Love it. 
and it's one of the worst that I tried in the line um, and one of the worst I tried last year. That doesn't mean that it's bad. I think that it has some redeeming qualities here, and I think you should probably go try it. But there's something about it I just didn't really care for. I like the patchouli aspect of this, but they did something with saffron that, that really made it smell a little turned. I didn't really like it at all. So, I don't know. The saffron kind of just ruined it for me. I don't love saffron in general. Sometimes I think that, they, that saffron can add something to a fragrance and bring out a nice kind of semi-spicy, semi-steamy, semi-woody type of smell, leathery. And I think they were trying to do that. I just think that they didn't... I, I think it was a swing and a miss. So 1965 by YVRA. Lester Fernandez says, I was disappointed with Telegrama. There are far better IA releases. I totally agree. And some of the latest ones from... Uh, Imaginary authors have been like killer, like um, St. Julep and uh, Sun Drunk, I think were fantastic. St. Julep, one of their best fresh scents, incredible. I love Sun Drunk too. You smells good in the house, Whack Pack, yes, Whack Pack. <laughs> but Telegrama, it has kind of that similar sweetness that some of his other fragrances had, so it had like a really sugary quality that I didn't like. So, yeah, definitely far better fragrances from imaginary authors than Telegrama, unfortunately. And I was hoping that it would move more towards a more dense direction. Sometimes I think that imaginary authors favors like these thin type of fragrances that are um, kind of sheer and not very rich on the lower end, on the like the bass note side. So, and that's just the style I think that they kind of go with sometimes. I was just hoping that this was gonna be more, more full, and it wasn't like that. It was, it had more of the upper end than anything else to me. Rich Mitch said, I can't name a designer fragrance I liked from 2019. Yeah, there are a lot of bad ones. Medina Custom Knives. Hola, Daver. Custom Knives? You kidding me? That sounds awesome. I got to go check your knives out. Do you have a... So do you sell custom knives? Or is that just uh, just your handle on YouTube? <laughs> Rich Mitch says, Quack Pack! <laughs> Aubrey uh, uh, Melcu Melculo. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Sorry, Aubrey. Says I own says I own most of the imaginary authors. My favorite is Every Storm a Serenade. Yeah, that's excellent. Really, really good. You know, it's funny. That's one that I think favors the denser side, which I think is really great. Um, whenever he made that, right after he made that, Tom Ford came out with Oud Mineral that smells like 80% similar to Every Storm a Serenade. So yeah. I think, I think every, every Storm of Serenade, I think, is better. Um, but it's, it's very similar to uh, Every Storm of Serenade. And, I mean, I love that one, too. Just a, a great, steamy, rainy, petrichor type of smell. Love it. Woody. Oh, it's so good. I need to wear that today, maybe. <laughs> Daniel T. says, How are imaginary authors? They're excellent. They sell sample packs, so uh, you can find them. You, you can find like a sample pack on their site for a really great price. So definitely go check them out. Aubrey Melculo says, "I still haven't smelled Telegrama, but I watched your review and I immediately noticed you were not a fan." Yeah, yeah. When I did the first impressions, I liked it, and then the more I wore it, I wore it, you know, like the next week, and I was like. I am not feeling this at all. It, it just went from high hopes to like, and then just went down and down and down and down and down. So, yeah. <laughs> Papil, let's see. Papil Palfoon says, LOL, Dave, your thumbnail in this video scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I think I need Papil Palfoon. I don't know what that is, but okay. Thank you. <laughs> 
Rich Mint says, I love a saffron scent, gotta be used right. I totally agree. Saffron can be used pretty well. I think if it's used too much, it kind of ruins the magic of saffron. And part of the, part of the thing about saffron is that it's, it's hard to acquire, and so it's used only sparingly. So when you smell it in a, in a more saffron-forward way, it almost smells off-putting. I think this is like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It brings out a certain aspect of the patchouli that I think is nice, but, but it didn't need to go there. I think the patchouli by itself would have been better. I think it would have been better without saffron, honestly. Okay, two more. Um, I have actually a few more, but two more uh, that I want to talk about the worst of 2019. One was the John Varvatos, Nick Jonas collaboration, both the original and the Crimson. My gosh, could there have been a worse collaboration for John Varvatos? Those were awful. One of them smelled like Indictus. Another one, and then the original one smelled like kind of like an Invictus clone. And then Crimson kind of smelled like a Polo Red clone? <laughs> Stupid. It was so dumb. Like, out of all the fragrances you would want to copy, I could see some people thinking that copying Invictus might be okay because Invictus is kind of popular. But Crim, but Polo Red. What a dumb thing to copy. Ryan Huerta says, too sweet, and I was hoping for a retro-style herbal lav lavender. Totally agree. That's what I was really hoping for. I was really hoping for, like, a retro-style. And it's supposed to be kind of inspired by the 60s, but it doesn't smell like the 60s. It doesn't smell like those fragrances from the 60s. I've smelled a couple. I think there's one by Gillette. It's either called, is it, it's called Sun Up, I think. And I've smelled a fragrance that's supposed to be reminiscent of that. I haven't smelled the original Gillette, but I smelled a fragrance that it was an aftershave that is supposed to copy that, like a modern day aftershave. And that smells like what you'd expect, like this big 60s um, fougere type of smell. It smells good. It smells, you know, dated, it smells classic, but it smells really good. This one, it didn't smell inspired by the 60s, like it said it was. So there was this kind of uh, disconnect there, this cognitive dissonance really between the packaging the presentation, the notes, and then the smell. It's, it, was just, it was just all wrong. And I hate to say that because I'm a huge fan of imaginary authors, huge fan of Josh Myers. And so that really, that really broke my heart in a lot of ways. Davis Lyons says, hey, David, nice to see you uh, live today. David, any idea why... I find some fragrances would cause headaches. Not sure if I'm the only one, but I bought some fragrances um, that they would get in, and they would give me a headache. I'm not sure. Um, excuse me. Some fragrances just do that to some people. My wife is more susceptible to that, uh, usually with, with stronger fragrances, which is why she doesn't like it. I'm not really sure why. Paul Stanier says the only headache I get is the cost. <laughs> Half Sheen Jam says Caron is releasing a new line which sounds amazing with better quality. That does sound amazing. I want to check that out for sure. <laughs> Ads L says just joining. Has the traditional has the traditional office for men slating happened yet? It has. It has. So you're a little late to the party. <laughs> but you can go back and watch the video if you want. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Review says, I really enjoy Sun Drunk and the Discontinued Violet Disguise. Yeah, those are excellent. Um, Violet Disguise was a... Um, it's kind of an underdog in that line, I think. It was discontinued, but I think it was really good. <coughs> it wasn't super special, Maybe it wasn't very unique. Maybe that's why it was discontinued. <coughs> Casual Fragrances says, Hey, David, how are you doing? Worst fragrance of 2019 is Dior Sauvage Parfum. 
do your cash uh, cash grab bottle. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I haven't tried that one yet. I have one on the way. Excuse me. Went down the wrong pipe. Yeah, I got to check that one out for sure. Oh, here you go. Bruno uh, Gambroni says, or Jam Gambroni. <laughs> Sorry, mispronouncing your names, guys. Uh, says, imaginary authors will have a 50% off uh, sale on their samples every few months. Yes, they will. So definitely check that out. If you don't follow them on Instagram or Facebook, go and follow them because they'll have their sales uh, advertised on their site. You could probably actually go sign up for their email too if you don't go on on. Uh, if you, if you don't go on social media, you can get them, get their emails. The Burrow Nerdy, Nerdy Fragrance Review says, Aqua de Gio Absolute Instinct was depressing. <laughs> Justin said, uh, everything Dior does these days is a cash grab. That's funny. All right, so let's go to some more real quick. Here's another one. Now, this is a little bit random because it's another one of those awful flankers. This Kenneth Cole reaction t-shirt. <laughs> and my rule of um, having a bad name for a flanker holds true. Kenneth Cole reaction, still not that great. But <laughs> and then Kenneth Cole reaction t-shirt, dumb name, awful fragrance. Ugh. This is a terrible citrusy scent that's not it's dull and bland and chalky it's really weird it is not good at all i got it randomly for a video i made and then um i tried it and i was like uh can't stand it I'm, i've tried so many fragrances this year and honestly i couldn't remember all the bad ones that i chose that i smelled these are just some of the ones that I've tried this year. But yeah, this is this is just one that definitely is bad. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Aubrey Melculo says, I hope Tiffany in Love made this list. <laughs> I haven't tried that. Justin says, who comes up with these names? I don't know. I mean, it's honestly like sometimes they have a flanker and they just have like a random name generator. <laughs> Come on, reaction t-shirt, spice bomb, night vision, night vision. Like when you think night vision, you think of like some kind of war game or like special ops mission or something. <laughs> Not spice bomb. Maybe that was why, because the bomb, I don't know, it's stupid. All right, let's see what else. Okay. So here's a couple that I tried. I got to try a few more from Raja Dove. I got a couple of samples. Um, here's one. <clears throat> I'm probably going to get a little criticism for this. Creation R, poor Ohm. I did not like this. And then another one was uh, Raja Dove, Shepra Extraordinaire, which I think is okay. And here's the thing with Raja Dove. I don't think that they're bad fragrances per se. And I know that he goes to great lengths to make really high quality blends and with real high, qu high quality ingredients. He takes care to perfect the blend and work on it for a long time and not just churn something out. I love all of that. You know, I respect all of that. The thing with Raja Dove to me is I just don't like his fragrances. <laughs> This, it just doesn't connect with me. It seems like they're really high quality fragrances for like a different age bracket. And that's always, that's always the impression that I get with his fragrances is they're high quality fragrances, but for someone else. That's always what I get. So Creation R is like an ambery, a woody ambery masculine scent and I say masculine. I mean, it could be kind of unisex too, I guess, but 
Not, not really a big fan of that. Sheeper Extraordinaire, another one I thought was nice, but smelled like it should have been for an older guy. And yeah, not a huge fan, unfortunately. But uh, with that said, I think that what he's doing with the, the, uh, the cologne line, I think is fantastic. I have those, I still need to review those, it's just taking time. But I have, um, I have the whole line, and they're all actually really good. And especially some of them are really good. So I really like Elysium. That's one that I, I really like. Um, though, I, you know, I'm not exactly sure if it's necessarily worth the cost for that one, but it's still really good. And Vetiver, I think Vetiver is probably my favorite from that line, that cologne line. So I think that line is just one of those examples of how Raja Dub really can do something that I like. It's just that his traditional fragrances are not something that really resonate with me. George Zaharoff, how are you doing, George? He says, uh, Davis, he's talking about Davis, he says, synthetics will do that, it'll give you a headache. Definitely, some, some ingredients just will just go right there. Roland says, Raja is out of my budget. If I was wealthy, maybe. Yeah, his fragrances are pretty expensive. So, <laughs> fragrances are hard to kind of justify to other people. So it's hard for me to say, you know, is something worth it to me for you? <laughs> and I know you're not asking for that opinion, but um, sometimes I think, is it worth a recommendation? And it's impossible to gauge because for some people, Anything above $30 <laughs> would be unreasonable to spend on something that is not necessary for living on earth, you know? <laughs> and as a luxury item, fragrance is not necessary to live, you know? It's just a luxury. So you just have to really like luxury, like fragrances to think if something is worth it and then have that, um, have that kind of mentality. So it's, it's difficult. I think for me, a lot of the Raja Doves are overpriced too, but that's just because I really just don't really care for his line. Um, I don't know about the other, the Cologne line, I might feel differently about that. Because I think they're a little bit cheaper for the Cologne line. Thank you, George. He says, sending love to your channel. Thank you so much. He says, like listening to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Andres Arias says, have you smelled Jeremy's balls? <laughs> it is supposed to be really good, to be good this year. <laughs> no. Aubrey Melchulo says, people say Raja Dove is not a real perfumer. Other people uh, make them, what do you think? I mean, I don't care. Here's the thing, like, people argue over the dumbest things. At the end of the day, who cares who made it? Like, this is not Raja Dove, but this is, you know, who cares? I don't care. I don't care if an AI system made it. Is it good? Um, if Raja Dove is not a perfumer, I don't care. <laughs> some people don't, you know, some people, like, here's Navitus, the Navitus line. So I have a review coming of this. These are actually good. So I really like that. This is Stevens line. Now, he's not the perfumer. He uh, commissioned perfumers to make it. And some people are, are saying that like, it's not his fragrance line and stuff like that. I'm like, like utterly ridiculous claims that now they want an answer to as if it mattered in the first place. It's dumb. It's like, it's so dumb. <laughs> I, I just, I, I really hate hearing just these off the wall conspiracy theories. And then people are asking questions about are these conspiracy theories real as if they mattered. They don't. If Roger Dove is not a perfumer, I don't care. Like his, his, his fragrances aren't my thing anyway. Some people really like them, I don't care. If my favorite fragrance in the world, uh, Green Irish Tweed, if it was made by robots, I don't care. <laughs> I, just want a, I just want a fragrance that smells good.
Uh, the Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Review says, I agree, Raja fragrances are obviously quality, but I struggle to gel with any of them. Yeah, I agree. Justin, do you like any of the Rajas very hyped? Yeah, I mean, definitely like the Cologne line, I think is my favorite of the ones. I, I think almost all of his Cologne line are ones that I would actually wear. Half Sheen Jam says, Elysium equals polished with better quality Sauvage. Yeah, 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 I definitely see that. Um, so I like the original Sauvage. Elysium is a little different. It, it smells a little bit more citrusy than Sauvage does necessarily. Sauvage has that really nice bergamot that I like. Elysium smells like it adds a little bit more of a, a, a citrus cocktail on top. And... Um, Sauvage has like that synthetic musky thing that some people really don't like and they really can't stand. Um, I like it. I think it's really good. Elysium doesn't have that as much. And um, because of that, it seems like it doesn't last quite as long. It's not quite as beefy. And I think it's not as bold and powerful as uh, Sauvage is. Um, and... <laughs> In a weird way, like Sauvage, some people say like Sauvage is, is kind of boring, but Sauvage is not really boring. Sauvage kind of started this whole trend of like the musky citrusy thing recently. And I don't see Sauvage as boring. I, I actually see it as pretty bold. But people that are trying to do better than Sauvage end up being boring. And Elysium is one of those fragrances that I like, but... I find it a little bit on the boring side. Casual Fragrances says, I have Creation E and my favorite is uh, Scandal Cologne. Yeah, so I haven't worn Scandal for a full wearing, but I do like that. Um, I need to give all those a, a better wearing, but some of those are really good. So I really like the Cologne line. Rich Mitch says, high quality fragrances, talking about Roger Duff here, says high quality fragrances that you aren't good enough for is exactly the vibe that he's going for, playing on people's self-loathing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily think he's, he's playing off of uh, like self-loathing. I think he's going more for like the exclusive uh, high luxury type of thing. So all of his fragrances are very expensive. Because of that, they're just by their price point, more exclusive. So you're going to be part of a club um, that is a lot more rare than the Sauvage Club, you know? So I think that's really what he's going for. He's, he's, he doesn't want to make a fragrance for every man or woman. He wants, a, he wants to make a fragrance for, like, someone with particular tastes. I think that's really what he's going for. Interesting enough, I think that having the cologne line is kind of the opposite kind of theory there. So he's going for more of the everyday, every man, every woman kind of thing. So I'm really interested in seeing how that plays out. Christy O says, Roger Duff frags are so expensive. I feel like I should like them, but I really don't. Just meh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things too where this is one thing I don't like about really expensive fragrances is they almost try to dictate that you should like them because they're expensive. And that's one kind of thing that I think is kind of perceived with Raja Dove within the community. Because they're expensive, then they have to be good. They have to be liked, they have to be respected. And that's one tactic that you can use when you're, you know, you're releasing a fragrance. You can kind of dictate that people will like it because of the price. I think that is one strategy that Raja Dove has used really well. Um, he also makes them really well. Like they, they feel blended and complex and stuff, but yeah, you're right. To me, they're just, they're just always kind of meh and not, not a huge fan. I 
Screaming Sex Doll says, apart from exclusive lines, I would question whether any designer scents are worth buying these days. That's a good question. That's a good um, statement or question. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I think there are some designer lines I think are trying. Like, um, I think John Varvatos is one of those designer lines that I think they do a pretty good job. They don't always work. Like with, <laughs> with uh, Nick Jonas, the Nick Jonas collection definitely didn't work there. But I think they typically do a pretty good job. I think there are other ones that do really well too. Dior, I think, always does a pretty good job at what they do with their, uh, their, more, their, their regular price line. I think Tom Ford does as well. Tom Ford to me is like the opposite. Tom Ford, their kind of normal uh, label line is actually better than their private blend line to me. Like their private blend line to me has, has just gone downhill. I, like none of them are good. Not, not recently, almost none of them. But um, their, their regular kind of just Tom Ford line that you can find you know, at any department store, to me, those are always really good. And every new fragrance that comes out in that line usually is always like killing it. So yeah, I, I think there are some that are out there. I think they're just, they're harder, to, they're harder to track down. And I think that it kind of comes down to a lot of these designer houses are really just playing it safe. Um, and I think sometimes that is a strategy that works for them. Uh, but I think recently all of them are doing that. I, I don't really know why with, uh, I think the economy is so, like in such an up place right now that it's dumb for them to be so conservative and not take risks. I think they really could take risks and it would be a lot more profitable than playing it safe. EUK007 says, hi, it's my third time to catch you via live stream, and I'm really enjoying it. Regards from the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Really appreciate it. Roland says, I just got a uh, Rasasi Neroli canvas, and the leather box is amazing. I have to try that. Aubrey Melculo says, Fragcom enjoys these conspiracy topics. Many frag heads are continuously entertained. Does it hurt the community? I mean, I think it does. I think, I think just these, these unnecessary topics of if someone is uh, who they say they are and they need to prove themselves based on, on these things, I just don't see it as like a, a good thing. Like I think Stephen is one of the perfect examples of that. Like he sent me this. And Stephen is a, an amazing person, okay? So I've met him in person, great, great guy. I don't think there's a nicer person in the fragrance world, okay? I mean, he's just one of the nicest people. He sent this to me for review, so I'm definitely going to talk about this. This is, this is uh, Navis. Golly, got some airplanes flying overhead. So Navis is really good. I'll be talking more about this later. The Navitas line in general is also really good. And people have said, like I said before, made these false claims about, uh, about, about Steven as if it mattered. Like the guy makes quality videos, he's making a fragrance line, and people are out there just, just to blast him. I, I just think that it's stupid. It's so, so stupid. And the whole, the whole conspiracy theory of like, if, is this person doing this, or is this company doing that, is it true? So what? I mean, I, I don't care. <laughs> I just think they're so, it, it's such a dumb place. And what's weird is a lot of these, uh, like conspiracy theories in general. So I'm not totally against conspiracy theories, okay? It depends on how much evidence is there for it. I think, so, like, so some conspiracy theories have turned out to be actual conspiracies, okay? So that's not, it's not, uncommon for some of these wild outlandish theories to be reality. But what it takes to convince me of a conspiracy theory being a legitimate conspiracy 
is evidence. And if there's a large amount of evidence and there's just an overwhelming thing that says, how much, how much evidence will it take to convince you that something is real? That's what it is. And with most of these things, it's just like they start with a premise. Is this, is this really true? And then they use circular reasoning to say this person needs to prove that it's true because we're saying that it's probably not true. It's so dumb, okay? Like these people, don't, these people don't need to answer these stupid things. Like, is Daver really in his house? Is this really his house? Probably gonna be a conspiracy theory about that someday soon too. <laughs> but yeah, I do think that this kind of thing hurts the community. But at the same time, like these type of things are more relegated to Facebook, which is trash. <laughs> Facebook is a dumpster fire. It's going downhill. Uh, but I don't see as much of that on YouTube, thank God. I think mostly because, well, I don't know really the reason why, but, but yeah. So when I consider what the fragrance community is, to me, the fragrance community is a YouTube-concentric uh, circle and not, like the, not, not the overarching uh, perfume world bubble. Andres uh, Aria says, I just bought La Venture, but I have not smelt it yet. Is it good? I mean, I like it. I think it's pretty good. It's kind of a clone of, I mean, it is definitely a clone of Green Irish Tweed. Um, it's not quite as good as Green Irish Tweed, but as far as those type of fragrances go, I think it's, it's pretty good. So yeah, it's definitely worth the price. Roland says, Rums al Rasasi Crocodile is a better Sauvage, in my opinion, but still synthetic yet smoother. Interesting. Aubrey Melchulo says, Do niche snobs have a place in the fragrance community? Absolutely. Everyone has a place in the fragrance community. <laughs> mm. Billy Eve says, Are you still here? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Am I still here? Napoleon 1805 says Elysium is definitely boring. Yeah, I, I like it, but it is more on, <laughs> more on, it is definitely on the boring side, I think. There are citruses out there that I think are incredible. Like one citrus that I think is just outrageous, so good, is uh, uh, Eccentric 04 by, you know, molecule, uh, by Eccentric Molecules 04. That is a citrus that is unreal. So good. <laughs> Ryan Huerta, Epstein Fatale, <laughs> lol. <laughs> Justin says, uh, Stephen gets a lot of unnecessary hate. I, you know, I agree. I absolutely agree. There's some people in the community that I think get criticism and they should get criticism, but there are other people that I think get criticism unduly. And I think, uh, uh, I think Stephen is one of those people that get criticism unduly. Like Jeremy Fragrance, I think is one person that gets the correct amount of criticism. <laughs> uh, but um, Stephen, not so much. Billy Eve says, thoughts on Dua Casino Elixir. So I do not like to talk about colognes on my, ha on my fragrance channel. I've talked about Dua, I uh, made a video about Dua, and that's where I'm gonna let my opinion stay. <laughs> Jake Lewis says, I think niche snobs make us stronger. It's funny. <laughs> Liel Sinai says, have you guys talked about poop yet? <laughs> yeah, you're already too late, Liel, sorry. All right, let's see. Uh, Justin says, any of the Frederick Malls worth the price? That's a good question. I don't know. I, I haven't bought any Frederick Malls. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend Frederick Mall. Um, I think all of them are really good fragrances that I'm just not a huge fan of. I think most of the, most of the fragrances from... Um, most of the fragrances from... 
Frederick Mall, I think are interesting. And I think they're, they're all pretty good, but none of them are to the point where I would want to, to go out and buy one. But that's, that's just me. I think there are other people out there that, who really like it. Like I can think of like uh, Eugene from You Smells Good. I think he really likes Frederick Mall. Some other people out there that really like Frederick Mall too. Billy Eve says, everyone likes my Nautica Voyage in the summer and that was $12 for 100 mil. Yeah, that's a good fragrance for $12. Ryan Huerta says, I much prefer uh, Zerzhov over Raja, although their quality, way too much money to buy a fragrance that you feel is just okay. Yeah, I totally agree. Zerzhov makes excellent, excellent fragrances. And they're also a company that does citruses extremely well. Like if you want really good citrus scents, I think Zerzhov is some of the like the best citrus fragrances out there, easily. Roland said, Dior dares. Uh, I'm assuming that means take risks. Yeah, I think they do sometimes. Um, I think Sauvage was a hedged, a hedged bet. Um, I think they were a little bit, I think they were going out there a little bit, but it wasn't all in. <laughs> I think they did a good job though. And I think they're continuing to do a good job. I still need to try the uh, Parfum version of Sauvage, which is on the way. And then I really want to try the new Dior Homme 2020 and see how that is. I also really want to come back to the, to the, uh, the private collection that they have. I know that they redid it. I tried some on a live uh, some time ago, and I thought they were okay, but I wanna, I wanna come back to them and see how they are. Napoleon 1805 says, Chanel is still great. I don't care what anyone says. The, les, the uh, Les Exclusifs uh, EDPs are fantastic. You're right. Um, I think Chanel still makes excellent fragrances, even in their normal line. And the Les Exclusifs the les, les Exclusif line is really incredible, like Jersey, incredible. Uh, Coromandel, probably my favorite. Incredible, incredible. Ah, um, well, a sycamore, yeah, incredible. Justin says, uh, tobacco Ford, uh, I'm sorry, Tom Ford, Tobacco Vanille, and Tobacco Oud are still great. Talking about the private blend line, yeah. I think there are still some really good ones in the Tom Ford private blend line, but recently they've just been churning out more and more in that private blend line that are just really just duds. I think they really do a far better job with their just normal uh, Tom Ford label line than they do with the private blend line. All right, let's see here. Clap for boobies. <laughs> Says Telegrama is very weird. Powdery, laundry, no thanks. Yeah, it is kind of weird. I don't get much of a laundry thing. Um, and I talked to... I talked to the perfumer, Josh Meyer, and he said he actually, because there's fresh linens is supposed to be one of the ingredients in here, you know, the imaginary note. And I asked him about that, and he said, he said he, he might not have put that in there. He said it was like a, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think that was, um, I think he, he might have changed that if he could go back now. So I don't really get much of a, a laundry thing, but I agree, it's not, it's not great. All right, let's see here. EUK007 says, lots of oud scents or hints of oud are on the market. Can you mention your top three oud scents? So let me, let me think here. Oud Wood by Tom Ford, probably my favorite uh, Oud fragrance. Royal Oud by Creed, also really good. Both of those don't have a very strong Oud presence. Um, they're in there, but they're not super strong. 
especially with like a, both, like both of those are not super strong, but I really like those. Um, a couple more that I think are really good are um, Laudano Nero, excellent, excellent oud fragrance. Um, oud Mineral by Tom Ford, another excellent one. Um, Dirty English by um, Juicy Couture, I think was really good. There's a lot. There's a lot of really good oud ones. There are probably some that I like that I just can't think of off the top of my head, but yeah, those are some that I really like. Jake Lewis says, talking to Napoleon, says, Chanel will save the fragrance game. <laughs> Rich Mitch says, conspiracy theory, Epstein did kill himself. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the conspiracy now? That's the real conspiracy theory at this point. <laughs> Jake Lewis says that Rich Mitch, CNN wants to know your location. <laughs> I just probably turn on my uh, my VPN at this point, huh? <laughs> Nandi Casa says, uh, Mugler Amen Ultimate Thoughts. I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to contact them and ask them to see if they'll send me some for review because I do want to try that. There, there's a few in the Mugler line that I want to try, so I'm going to see if I'm going to see if I can get some uh, soon. Napoleon1805 says, David, what do you think of Rogue Perfumery? I got a full sample set and have been loving all the perfumes so far. Uh, Mouse Illuminé is my favorite so far. I haven't tried them yet, but I've heard really good things. Um, it's it's, it's uh, an ordeal to try to keep up with all these fragrance houses, but I need to try them for sure. Screaming Sex Doll says, in defense of Stephen, I own uh, Absolutio which uh, people claim is a clone of Baccarat Rouge 540, which I also own, he says. Apart from both being sweet, they smell nothing alike. You know what's funny is I do think they smell alike. Um, I tried, um, I, I wore Absolutio the other day, and I found it. It does smell similar to Baccarat Rouge 540. I would not say it's a clone at all, but I think it's very close. Um, especially, there's like the, there's this heart of Baccarat Rouge 540 in there. And um, the notes, to me, in Absolutio seem incongruent with how I perceive the fragrance. Christy O says, curious if you smelled any of the Ducita line. Uh, that's quality I would, uh, I would buy, but I wonder if that's because I like Passara. <laughs> so yes, I have a couple of samples from her and I really like the line. Um, I don't think I've tried everything. So she has one that's a gardenia fragrance that I think is like gorgeous. One of the best gardenia fragrances I've smelled. It's on the more feminine side, which gardenia kind of leans, uh, leans to a lot of times. I think a lot of fragrance houses kind of lean more into that, uh, that feminine side for gardenia. But her gardenia is incredible, incredible. And so, yeah, I really like that. Um, I don't. I don't really have a, have many thoughts other than that, though. I've tried. I think I've tried three or four in a line. I, I thought they were all really good. Roland says I have Gucci Intense Oud in my basket. Before I pull the trigger, carry a comment on it. I haven't tried that one, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Frank Hansen says, uh, or is it Hansen? I'm, I'm not sure. It says Eccentric 04 is great. I get grapefruit in that one. Yeah. So I get like a really sour grapefruit, which is what I really like. Um, I also like how there's like this, that, that really sour green quality is in there. I think it works beautiful with the sandalwood in that. One of my absolute favorite fragrances for sure. Aubrey Melculo says, wow, the response you gave on Duo was harsh. I guess there's a story there. I mean, not really. It's, it's not really Duo themselves. I just don't like clones and especially in the fragrance world now like like whenever you talk about a fragrance they'll say yeah but this clone smells just like it for $30 I'm like I, I don't care <laughs> I don't care everyone can make a clone I, I think that making a clone is so uninspired I think there's just 
I just hate how like a lot, a lot of, of these really big channels have just become like um, advertisements, advertisements for clone houses. I think it's so dumb. Daniel T says, is there a difference between clone and inspired by? No, <laughs> it's the exact same thing. <laughs> Andres Aria says, I randomly saw, uh, saw you do a video on the Shone design pen. Do you still use it? LOL, sorry, off topic. It was just uh, random seeing you. Yes, so I do. Um, it's th so the one I have, the, the original pen, I think it's just called the pen, the pen project. The original one that I have, the, what I have is steel, and that's pretty heavy. If, um, if I went back, I'd probably actually choose like the aluminum version. I would also get the D2 adapter. The D2 adapter fits different cartridges in there. The original pin was made for the Fisher Space Pin, which I hate. The cartridge on, I hate that cartridge. Writing with the Fisher Space Pin is like, like dreadful. It's like work. So I, I don't like that at all. The D2 refill, you can find it in a lot of different colors and you can get gel inks for that, which is a lot better. They're smaller, so it's a compromise there, but I think it's really good. He actually just contacted me and sent me his um, fountain pen, uh, which is so small. Like, like the it's a full size fountain pen. You you unscrew it. It's made in a similar form factor as the original pen, so you get that kind of cylinder that unscrews and then the it screws in the back, and then you get the full size pen. But it has a full size nib on there, fountain pen nib, and. It's amazing. So I have the aluminum version of that and it's so light. Like it's featherweight, weighs nothing. It doesn't take any, it doesn't take fountain pen uh, uh, converter cartridges or converters. It takes the little cartridges, which is because it won't fit the standard converter in there because it's so small. But the cartridge is fine. You know, I think that's fine with that. I, I found that like with fountain pens especially, Filling it up with ink every time was one of the, the things I hated the most about fountain pens. I liked the experience of writing with fountain pens, but I hated going back and cleaning it and then filling it up with ink. It was just like, a, I, I just hated doing that. So, um, and the, the I, it probably depends on the converter that you get too, but the converter that I had on a different pen, I had to take it apart. I couldn't, I couldn't really clean it out. Um, and then, you know, and then suck it up with the, the converter like some pens. But yeah, the Shone Design pen, excellent, excellent. Love it. But yeah, that would, be, that would be my thing, though. I think if, it depends if you like the Fisher Space Pen uh, refill. If you like that refill, I think it's um, an upgrade to the Fisher Space Pen. Um, but I would also consider getting maybe a lighter um, a lighter metal in there because the, the steel version is really heavy. That coupled with the Fisher Space Pen makes it like not a joy to write with. Bongani says, now my third bottle of a Citric 04. Yeah, it's really good. Jake Lewis says, Dave, thoughts on vintage perfume hunting? Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, of vintage perfume hunting. It's just my thing, though. Um, I think, you know, I know that you can probably get some really good vintage perfumes. Um, it, I think it just comes down to the collector. Some collectors really love that chase of finding those old things, those antiques, uh, or those really rare, um, you know, unicorns of fragrances. Vintage hunting is like that. But also, too, you don't know how it was stored, where it was stored, so it's a gamble. And the price, a lot of times, is, depending on what you get, can be really expensive. Kyle Carnes says, Royal Water is an amazing and such a slept-on creed. Yeah, I think it's great. Royal Water is not my favorite, but I think it's like their, 
like their second or third tier <laughs> level of uh, fragrances. And I think, it's, I think it's good. Definitely one that I would wear if I had it. Tom Barson says, Frederick Mall are high quality fragrances, no doubt. And they weren't made overnight. I guess people have issues to connect to them emotionally and are struggling with a common DNA in their line. Yeah, I can see that. I like, what I like about the Frederick Mall line, I like that his theme really is to give the perfumer full creative control. I like that. So I like seeing what the perfumer thinks of and what inspires the perfumer themselves. I think that's a really intriguing idea. And so what comes out are fragrances that are truly interesting. So, um, so I, you know, I like that. I don't necessarily need a common DNA. Sometimes with fragrance lines, that actually tires me more than anything else. Justin says, thinking of picking up Baccarat Rouge 540 and Grand Soir, both of them are excellent. Uh, excellent, excellent fragrances. <laughs> and like I said before, I think if you like the Baccarat Rouge 540, you know, trend that's going on, the original, I think, is still the best. And Grand Soir is an excellent uh, amber scent that is really wearable. I like that one a lot. Tom Barnes continues with uh, Frederick Mall says, but some of them are exceptional to me. Yeah, I think they're made so well. Um, the problem with me is I think what you said, that, that, that lack of emotional connection with the line. And so that, that is really, to me, where it is. I don't really get, it, none of it kind of screams at me. So, yeah. Igor Salman says, uh, or Salmon, <laughs> says, Givenchy Gentleman says, thumbs up or thumbs down? I'm going to say thumbs up. It's been a while, but I remember thinking it was pretty good. But I don't have a lot of thoughts after that. Napoleon1805 says, talking to Justin, says, if you're going to buy them, the Maison Francis Kirk John fragrances, get them directly from uh, Maison Francis Kirk John's website. It's cheaper uh, that way, and they ship DHL Express to anywhere. So that's good. Thank you for telling, telling us that, Napoleon. <laughs> Bruno Jamboni Broni says, Dave is squatting in someone's house. Triple confirmed. <laughs> now prove it. <laughs> I, I said that. I need to now prove that, that I'm in my house. <laughs> Rich Mitch, did someone say Laudno Nero? Liel Sinai. So uh, I mentioned this earlier. So this is bubbly. It's like a flavored water. I don't know where else this is sold. I just get it at Walmart. But uh, this one is blackberry flavored, which I don't really love. It's okay. The, the, the more citrusy flavors are better. <laughs> Justin says Dave has a green screen behind him. That's right. I can kind of touch it. If you see, I can, I can kind of touch it right here. <laughs> Kajal Perfume says, I think we should introduce the term hybrid to the fragrance world, where a fragrance is not a clone of another, but a rendition that is close to it, evolved in its own way. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that, I don't know. I think, I don't think, the, I don't think the word hybrid really, I have to think about it, but I think the, the trend really is, really what we talk about when there's a fragrance trend and they just kind of go on those kind of, like the, the BR40 trend, 
now, where a lot of fragrances are, are making those type of fragrances now. <laughs> Ryan Huerta says, clones over robot sense, LOL. Tom Barson says, have you tried anything from Orto Parisi? I think I have. I think I have samples from them. Um, sometimes it's hard, to, it's hard to keep track of everything, but I don't remember. Oh, okay, so another fragrance, I forgot. So we talked a lot about all these fragrances that I didn't like. I didn't finish my list. I have one more, or a group of fragrances that I didn't like that, uh, uh, that I tried last year, and that was the, the fakes that I bought from Wish. <laughs> so that was a fun video that I did. So look at this. Can you see this? Let's see if I can cover it up here. You can see how fake that is, real. So yeah, I bought some fakes on Wish. Not good. But I did it for you. <laughs> that was a fun video. And never buy fragrances from Wish. And uh, I did that just so everyone could learn the lesson. Silver fountain water. <laughs> That's right. The backup bottle boss sent me $2. Thank you. Said a little bit of the bubbly, <laughs> Chris Jericho. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Alex98765 says, Last designer that I love is Valentina Uomo Noir Absolute. Original niche quality scent. Interesting. I haven't tried that one. Tilka Nuts says, Hey, Daver, I'm a freshy aquatic type of frag head, but I don't have any newer fragrances as of late. Uh, have any recommendations of ones that you really like? So, freshy aquatics. Have you tried Aqua Amara? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> if you like freshy aquatics, I think this is okay. Um, I joke about it, but some people really like it. So if you haven't tried Aqua Amara, I mean... You might as well try it. Um, but, but um, so there's one by Gallivant. Um, I forgot the name of it. There's one by Gallivant that is a citrusy, uh, freshy, aquatic type of thing that's supposed to be really good. Um, but I forgot the name. Um, try to think. Because I don't really, I don't really care for a lot of the citrusy aquatic genres in general. Because I think it's so tired at this point. Brooklyn casual fragrances. Thank you, Cal, uh, casual fragrances. It says Gallivant Brooklyn. Wait, no, no, no. That one's that one's a citrusy one. It's, I think it's Los Angeles. I think Los Angeles is the one that's supposed to be um, the citrusy uh, aquatic one. Valzalel says, uh, Hasagor by Lab on Fire has a nice aquatic nuance. Interesting. Chi Town, California says, Tilka Nuts, I wear Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue O Intense. It's my signature aquatic. Rich Mitch says, Cologne Royale by Dior. I really like Cologne Royale, but I wouldn't say it's an aquatic, but it's an excellent, excellent citrus scent. Excellent. Ryan Huerta says, really interested in trying Zaharoff Signature Pour Ohm. I'm going to be talking about that one soon. So I, I, I mentioned that one. I have that one on hand, um, and it's really good. So yeah, um, I think that's a really excellent fragrance. Uh, so yeah, I just need to, I need to, I need to get to it and review that one. <laughs> Chitown, California says, Wish has even been caught selling Fugazi Seikos. Really? Wow.
The Backup Bottle Boss says, any word on the new Valentino Uono Born in Roma? I haven't tried that one. Um, and that was one that um, I just kind of avoided. I didn't really care about trying, honestly. Chi-Town California says, Daver, uh, what did you think of Invictus Legend? Um, I think I tried it and, and didn't like it at all. Uh, I've tried a lot of flankers of Invictus, and I think they're just, just as bad as the original Invictus. Cuban Groove says, hey, Dave, what are some of your favorite Manceras? So I've only tried um, a few. Instant Crush is the one that I have on hand. I think they have one called, is it, uh, is it Black Candy? That's a licorice base that's really good. <laughs> Liel Sinai says, I took you for a four loco kind of guy. <laughs> Nope, I got, I have just bubbly taste. <laughs> Justin says, BR540 EDP or x -trait? Um, So when, so I know a lot of people say the x -trait, but I haven't tried the x -trait, So I can't say from personal experience. I really love the EDP. So let me see what time it is. Okay, good. I really love the EDP. I actually prefer... Well, I shouldn't say I prefer. I really love the EDP. That's what I reviewed in my um, my review of it. But a lot of people say that they actually prefer the x -trait. So um, I would just say, you know, try to get a sample from Lucky Scent. They sell samples of both of them. And, and see which one you prefer. Bruno Herrera says, David, do you get concrete vanilla smell? with burned wood smell from Creed Aventus. I don't really get that. that that's interesting, but I always love it. I always love to hear what strange associations or smells people get from different things. That's interesting. Naspa Crew says, just got Mancera Oud Cafe. What's your opinion on it? Okay, so I haven't tried that one, but if I'm correct, I think that one is one that smells like... Um, uh, was it Cafe Intense by, uh, by Montal? But I, ha I haven't tried that one. If they smell similar, I think that would smell great, but I just haven't tried that one uh, necessarily. All right, let's see here. Casual Sense says, Gallivant London, sorry. It's London? I thought that was a different one, too. I'm going to be reviewing Gallivant soon. EUK007 uh, says, Daver, can you name your top three all-time seductive sense panty droppers? No. <laughs> Miguel Angel Cabrera, how are you doing, man? The Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Review says you can get free samples of Zaharoff's signature on his website. Interesting. I didn't know he had free samples. That's great. <laughs> Leo Sinai says Cologne Royale with cheese. <laughs> is that what they say in France? <laughs> Rich Mitch says, no, you're right. It isn't an aquatic, but it is a, a citrus freshy, but it is beautiful. Talking about Cologne Royale. Uh, yes, it is. And it is one of my favorites from... Um, at least the old um, Dior private collection, private blend, or pri Privé collection. I don't know if they still have it. Do they still have it in the newer, the newer launch, the Maison Dior line? I don't know if they do. Chi-Town California says, I have a sample of Zaharoff Signature Port Ohm, and it's an excellent oriental fougere. I agree. It's really good. And I really like especially the, the ginger in that one. I think that's one that really stands out to me. Justin Chase Mullen says, how about date or office? Is it as much of a panty dropper as Aqua Amara is? <laughs> yes, it's just <laughs> equal in panty droppingness. <laughs> 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 
Miguel on Hel on Hel Cabrera says Tom Ford's new bow de jour is a really nice one to review. I gotta check that one out. <laughs> the backup bottle boss. Dior La Collection Cheese A. <laughs> Rich Mitch says, I really want to get Zahara for own, but I'm scant at the moment. I'm a coming, George. <laughs> Chi Town, California says, David, does Versace the Dreamer ever give you Welch's grape juice vibe? Um, I didn't get that. Um, it's interesting. I, I, I haven't gotten that, no. <laughs> Brian Souza says, have you tried Penhaligon's impudent cousin Matthew? I may pick that one up. <laughs> I want that just for the name now. I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> Casual Fragrance says, are you going to try, uh, try out Zoologist B and Zoologist Squid? I need to contact them and ask them if I can get some samples of their line, their current, their current line. But I, I get this question a lot in the lives. Have I tried zoologists and what do I think? And so my answer is that I tried them initially whenever they had like three fragrances and I wasn't a fan and I just never reviewed them. So since then, they've expanded their line quite a bit. So I need to try it. I need to catch up on their line and see how they are now. Daniel T says, Creed Tabarome. Yes, Creed Tabarome is excellent. Callie Review says, any announcements this year that you're excited about or excited for? Yeah, I mean, I want, I'm, we, and so I think I mentioned before that Jer moved back in town and uh, he and I are, are going to collaborate some more. Not a whole lot, but more. Since he's, since he's here, um, you know, we love hanging out. We love, you know, spending time together. So we're going to do that. And we've already talked about some things that we want to try, so we have some things planned there. Uh, but like I said, it's not going to be often. It's not going to be, it's not going to be regular, but it'll be more often than it used to be. <laughs> uh, and then we have, a, I have a couple of things that I want to try, and just see how how they go. And I don't really want to say exactly what they are, but um, it's a a format change that he and I might dabble in just to see how, how things go. I need to get, I need to upgrade some streaming equipment. Um, so right now I'm streaming from my phone. So here's my phone, <laughs> like right here. So uh, here's my phone, but I'm gonna be upgrading to uh, just streaming from my camera so I can have more of the, my camera, uh, just, you know, just higher quality streaming. So we'll see how that is. And um, I'm gonna have Jer, kind of review a couple of things with me or maybe even by himself. So we'll see. The backup bottle boss says they still have Cologne Royale, but it looks different. It's greenish now. Is it, does it smell the same? That's really what I'm interested in. Tilka Nut says, do you ever layer fragrances, Daver? Uh, if so, do you have any ones that you love to layer? I do not layer. I actually am against layering. Um, you know, everyone can enjoy it however they want. I just personally don't like the idea of layering just because, uh, you know, there's a lot of time spent in how a, a perfumer made the fragrance to be perceived and experienced. And it wasn't, most of the time, it's it's not the intent to be layered. Most of the time, it's just, enjoy it this way. So I think, um, I think layering is kind of just like experimenting. And most of the time I think it doesn't work. So I, I don't like layering at all. <laughs> the Bureau of Nerdy Fragrance Review says, I'll be sure to use the word uh, panty droppingness in a future review. Yeah. <laughs> you got to quote me, though. Quote me. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Kelly Review says, I can't wear Aquamara at parties because they always end early, you know, because all the panty droppings. <laughs> The Backup Bottle Boss says, I would support a Patreon for you and Jer. Thank you. So that's one thing that we've talked about before, seeing how I might be able to bring Jer back in more of a, um, a more regular schedule maybe. And I think one way would be possibly to kind of have a Patreon to do that. And thank you. Thank you for uh, suggesting that and saying that you would support us. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't know if there would be enough support, though, to do that for him. So we'd have to see. FC uh, Bayern Munchen says, really enjoy these live broadcasts, knowledge and humor all in one. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I like doing these live broadcasts. So I'll do them as long as you'll have me. <laughs> I want to try to do them regularly, so that's why I've been trying recently to try to uh, do it every week or every other week. So Friday is really good for me. So hopefully every Friday I can be, I can be back here and do these lives. Miguel Angel Cabrera says, I bought Aqua Amara like a year ago because I initially liked it, but now it smells harsh and synthetic, not really pleasant. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Rich Mitch says, did you know that Cologne Royale was made to be layered with all the other Privés? I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. I know that salesmen will say that in order to get you to buy two bottles. <laughs> Cologne Royale to me is like so good on its own. And so many of the other Dior Privé line were so good on their own. I just would never, I would never blend them. Kajal Perfume says, do you think you will make it to uh, Exents in April? I do not know. I want to look into it for sure. The, um, the planning and the money might be different and the schedule might be difficult for all that. But I want to see. Also, I'm not really sure how to get in. <laughs> Rich Mitch says, Clone, Clone Royale was a blind buy, wasn't it? Glad you love it. Um, no, I forgot how we got Clone Royale, actually. I think we got Clone Royale from doing splits. I don't remember, but it was really good. But yeah, I love it a lot. <laughs> the backup bottle boss says, I only blind buy, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I, I got a comment because I was talking about in my recent video, um, talking about, um, oh, also too, by the way, I have a best of video on, these are the worst video. These are the worst right here. I have a best of video. Definitely go check that out. I did collaboration with Cam from Carolina Fragrance Reviews. Definitely go check that out if you want to go see our best of videos there. I, I mentioned to Cam that I would, I would tell him that, and I did it at the very end of the video, so apologize about that, Cam. But, um, so in my latest video talking about, uh, Aqua Amara and blind buying and believing the hype and stuff like that. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned, you know, trying stuff and not blind buying. And I got a comment that I actually really appreciate. It was from someone that says uh, they blind buy a lot, but they're a collector. And I thought that was a really interesting perspective just because I'm not what I would consider a collector. I don't necessarily go out and try to get everything and I'll, I'll, I'll have fragrances and then I'll sell off what I don't use after a time. I'm kind of a uh, pragmatic uh, collector, if you will. I, I don't really collect things to, to have. I'm not like a diehard, hardcore collector. But um, some people are. And so if, uh, if those people blind by to have things, I think that's reasonable, you know, as long as, they, you know, as, long as they're fiscally responsible with, uh, with their money or whatever. But... Um, for everyone else who wants to have a fragrance and they don't care, if, if, if you care about being disappointed in a, in a buy, don't blind buy. 
But if you don't care about being disappointed and you just wanna have the bottle and you just wanna have it on hand because you like to collect, I think blind buying, perfectly reasonable. And I think that's an important point that uh, that person brought to me. I think I'd never thought of it about that until he actually, he or she commented that way. And the Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Review says, oh, I will. My buddy David likes to talk about <laughs> a fragrance panty dropping this. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Chi Town, California says, David, any advice on stockpiling Aqua Mar for that sweet investment dividend? <laughs> That's right. That's right. In order to get the dividend, you have to start a fragrance channel and then hype it. Oh, look, you can see my reflection from the reflection. Isn't that neat? <laughs> Start a fragrance channel, hype Aqua Mara, send them the link, and then start getting, start breaking in the dough. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is funny. Tilco Nut says, I work in preschool and wore Aqua Amara and got a compliment from a four-year-old girl. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. EUK007 says, come on, David, tell us your top three all-time panty dropper, uh, please. You know, I don't have those. I, 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 the reason I said no and was dismissive is just because I think that that idea is ridiculous. Um, I, the reason I think it's ridiculous is because, well, f for one, Every woman is different, but two, a fragrance is not going to be your answer, okay? If, if you want to be in any kind of relationship, even if it's a quick one, okay? <laughs> Beating around the bush here. Um, if you wanna be in any kind of relationship, a fragrance is the last thing that a woman is gonna be looking for, not the first thing. So having something in a, panty dropper type of fragrance, I think it's just a ridiculous type of frame talking about uh, your approach to a woman. I think, it's, I, I think it's also really insensitive, to say the least, and sexist at worst. So I, I don't really, I don't like that at all. And what's funny too is like, some of these people, they want a panty dropper fragrance and they're like the worst slobs in the world. Yeah, they want to get a panty dropper fragrance. I'm like, if you want, a, if you want a panty dropper, be a panty dropper. Okay, be someone that that someone of the someone would like. Okay, be that type of person, and you don't have to worry about a fragrance. <clears throat> fragrance is just the icing on the cake. It's not the cake itself. The Backup Bottle Boss continues, says, I'm a collector way past the point of wearing 90% of my bottles. I like bottles for reference and research, if nothing else. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's really interesting. I think that's a really interesting perspective. Roland says, I've had a lot of luck, but even with blind buys, I do a lot of research first. Yeah, yeah. Definitely look into it beforehand. And even then, even then, I've, I've done a couple of blind buys before and I've gotten skint. BP Wool, hey, hey, Brad, how you doing, man? Because I'm not too excited about any of the new releases in 2020, but I heard uh, Zinnia has a new one called Roman Wood, and that's gotten my attention. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Jake Lewis says, Daver, top 100 fragrances to get a wife, please. <laughs> The Bureau, uh, the Bureau Nerdy Fragrance Review says, I wholeheartedly agree. I hate the phrase panty dropper. It is demeaning and makes women seem shallow um, as a whole. Yeah, I, I agree. It also, it, it's also not a good look for men either. I mean, it looks really desperate. <laughs> That's the opposite of how, <laughs> how you want to approach a, a lady of any kind, of any, any situation. Don't look desperate. 
Justin Chase Mullen says, any plans to incorporate push-ups in tidy whitey underwear while wearing Aquamar in 2020? You know, I have thought about it. I have a table here. Should I jump on the table? That might, that might be a good idea. <laughs> Chi-Town California says, oh, silly guys, we're always looking for a shortcut. That's true. We really are. There is no shortcut, unfortunately. The Backup Bottle Boss says, when you're younger, they, uh, they really are panty droppers. <laughs> In your mid-20s and beyond, they don't exist. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Figueroa says, be the penny dropper, Buddha. <laughs> That's funny. Fall Guy says, there's no reason to blind buy when you can just get samples for basically everything now. I think that's also a really interesting idea too. So I'm not sure if this was you, but on that same video, someone else responded with a similar answer that said they don't buy anymore, they just get samples. And you can get certain samples and have really nice things and pull them out every once in a while. And uh, I thought that was also a really interesting idea, really interesting way of collecting. And in a lot of ways, really low cost or even almost free way of collecting too. That's pretty cool. Chi-Town California says, David, the best blind buy I ever made was Issei Miyake Low Blue Dise. Interesting. I don't think I've, I may have tried that one. I don't remember. <laughs> Jake Lewis says, back up Bottle Boss, you got the meme. <laughs> Daniel T, and how's Serge Luton share Guy? So I have a full review of that, but it's really good. It's a really excellent uh, tobacco and hay type of scent. It's kind of balmy and a little wet. Um, I like it a lot. <laughs> Justin Chase Mullen says, you're a riot, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tokenut says, if you find a girl who drops the panties because of a fragrance, she's probably not a very high quality woman anyway. That is true. That is true. You don't want a woman who drops panties for a fragrance. That'd be too easy. Too easy. I love these comments, guys. It says, Chai Town California says, I heard that Crocs plus Aqua Amara equals special superpowers. Oh, man, that's funny. We love you, Dan. <laughs> the backup bottle boss says, I've, I've spent hundreds on samples before and thought to myself, just buy the bottle next time. <laughs> Say any sense. David, are you okay? Yeah. Tilkanut says, the thing I don't like about getting samples is they evaporate like no one's business. That's true. That's the downside too. I think, I think with samples, you know, they're not meant to be stored long-term. They're meant to be used in order to try something out. So no one has really made um, a sample, uh, like a sample that's supposed to not evaporate. So it's kind of a thing. Samuel says, hello, brother. I love your reviews. I listen to you and I buy Cree GIT and Royal Oud. Thank you for that. I work in a pharmacy. Um, I think... I want to buy one of the one of these Creed Original Vetiver, Erofa, or MI. What do you say? Okay, so I think they're all really good. Um, and they're all a little different. So Original Vetiver, to me, is one of my favorites. It's a little bit soapy um, and green. Uh, Millicene Imperial, I don't like, but a lot of people do. And that one has kind of um, a citrusy, almost watermelon rind uh, type of thing. And Rolfa is kind of a salty, citrusy thing. I don't know if I could just recommend just one to you. It depends on what your tastes are, but all three of those are really good. Um, 
I think if it was me, I would probably pick original vetiver, but I don't know. The Bureau of Nerdy Fragrance Review says, I primarily collect brand travel atomizers, so I get uh, the nice presentation and decent amount to last a while. That's cool, yeah. Those are usually the better versions of them, too. <laughs> Chi Town, California. When you wear Aqua Mara, you evaporate. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So I think I have to go. Thank you everyone for, for joining me. Sorry, I, I know I missed some comments and missed some questions. So I apologize if I didn't get to get your, uh, your questions or answers there. But um, I appreciate everyone for joining me. Um, hopefully I can come on next week, same time, same place. Maybe same place. It depends on if this is my real house or not. We'll have to move the green screen and go somewhere else. <laughs> anyway. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate that for the $2. And I'll see you next time. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas for stream topics. If you have any, put some in the comments section maybe and, and uh, we'll get to those uh, next week. See you guys later. Hope you have a great week and a great day. See you later.